Today, every business is a digital business. Most of us are migrating workloads to the cloud, adopting DevOps tools, rolling out RPA software, and supporting a remote workforce. While opportunity is great, so is the risk of advanced cyber attacks. Many high-profile breaches start with a compromise of privileged credentials. CyberArk is the number one leader in privileged access management. Talk to CyberArk today to secure privileged access for humans and machines across hybrid and cloud environments and on endpoints. Learn more at securityweekly.com forward slash CyberArk and stay one step ahead of the attackers. The question is simple. Have any of the systems on my network been compromised? The answer is harder than it should be. Enter AI Hunter. Active Countermeasures has automated and streamlined techniques used by the best pen testers and threat hunters in the industry to create AI Hunter, a network threat hunting solution that does the first pass of a hunt for you to identify systems that are most likely to be compromised and scores the results on a scale from 0 to 100. You can then research those systems in depth with AI Hunter. Focus your valuable time on the systems that need your expertise with AI Hunter. Sign up for a personal demo today at securityweekly.com forward slash ACM. Welcome back, everyone, to Enterprise Security Weekly. Quick announcement, Layer 8 is going virtual. The conference will be held on Saturday, June 6th. Security Weekly listeners save $20 off on their ticket by visiting Layer8Conference.com using the promo code SECURITYWEEKLY. Uh, please consider supporting Layer 8 or one of their partner organizations when you purchase the ticket. Uh, some of the Security Weekly team will be in our own channel on the Layer 8 Discord server, answering questions uh, and hanging out. Out, uh, all throughout the day. Sid Nanda is a senior product marketing manager at Viavi Solutions, where he develops and drives go-to-market strategy for Viavi's enterprise cloud division. Welcome, Sid. How's it going, Paul? How are you? Doing great. Uh, our listeners can learn more about Viavi by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash Viavi. Um, it's nice to have you on, Sid, and uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about um, incident response and managing the cost. Of course, you know, one way to manage the cost is to not get breached, but that's, I mean, that's not a reality <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, the fact is there's a lot that the network can tell you. And to the extent that we can leverage the power of the network to help reduce remediation costs, you know, especially when there is an IR retainer involved, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot, um, uh, there's a lot uh, of win-win on both sides for the security guys and for the organization. You know, it, it's interesting. Some, some days when I get home, uh, so, you know, I'll spend a better part of my day developing content, researching exploits, vulnerabilities, attacks, malware, right? Then I get in my car and I happen to be listening to uh, the book by Kim Zetter. Uh, countdown to zero day, which is all about Stuxnet. Mm. And then I think we tend to forget that it was Dooku and then it was Flame and how all those tied together and use different tactics and techniques. And I get home and I'm just, you know, I look around, usually my neighbors are outside and I'm like, they have no idea. Like we are all <laughs> screwed from a cybersecurity perspective and nobody has yeah. any idea. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, we're yeah, so screwed. You know, but now to your point, Sid, to look at the network, there was a great uh, part. And I, I think I might've talked about this a little bit last week, right? When, when they were investigating Stuxnet, they were looking at the network traffic that was being sent from the management console to the PLCs. And when a machine was not infected with Stuxnet, those packets that ha carried those commands were of a certain size, right? Or if you think of it on a, you know, a it's in your product as well, right? It's kind of like a cluster, like they're all within a certain size. When a machine was infected with Stuxnet, the size of those packets that were command and control of the PLC were much, much larger, uh. right? And that was one way they went wait a minute, this malware is doing something with our PLCs, uh -huh. right? So it's very much, you could, and it, the lengths that Stuxnet and all of those other variants went through to hide, right, was extensive, yep. but they couldn't hide from the network, right? Exactly, exactly. The network reveals all. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, um, just, just a couple of weeks ago, I was chatting with some of my, um, my ex-coworkers at, uh, over at Aon Cyber, they, they're senior consultants doing instant response and, you know, I was like, you know, what's the first sort of thing you, you look for um, when, when you go in and you try to do this um, remediation? And they're like, man, I always look for a PCAP file, you mm -hmm. know? And, it, and they were telling me, you know, Sid, it's so hard. It's such a rare thing to get a P PCAP file these days. 
you know, a lot of folks, you know, if they have some sort of packet analyzer in place, it's like a, you know, like a Wireshark or maybe like a, you know, bolted onto their IDS or something, but it speeds it up tremendously, right? And, uh, you know, that's, that's, it's a very, um, you know, the power of the network, right? Power of the network. Yeah. And consultants can get uh, expensive too, right? And yep. Yep. In, in my experience, I was telling Sid this, this story uh, earlier, late last week. I was like, you know, when I worked for a company very early on in my career, it was kind of my first exposure to a larger company, uh, working mm-hmm. in a larger company, and they had lots of consultants, right? And mm-hmm. one of the consultants, you know, they'd be in this situation that I think applies to this incident response and getting PCAPs very, very nicely, right? Yep. Where the consultant would be, oh, I can do that work, but I need X, Y, and Z. And we're like, exactly. oh, I don't know, it's going to take, you know, hours, days, whatever to get you X, yeah. Y, and Z. And his exactly. response would be, you know, I, what is that sound I hear? I think it's cha-ching, <laughs> cha-ching, cha-ching, right? Because the consultant is going to be there, and they're going right. to wait, and they're still getting right. paid <laughs> until you exactly. get them what they need. And it's exactly. the same thing in instant response. I think yeah. I've even been in this exact situation where uh-huh. they're like, we are hacked. And I'm like, all right, first thing. I need any kind of network packet captures that you have. Yep. And they're like, yep. yeah, it's going to be, you know, hours or days or whatever. Or as a consultant, I have to help them set that up or, or whatever. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. you yep. know, that's money that you're spending on that incident response, uh, you know, yeah. hits your bill. And it, and, it is, and it is pretty easily remedied, right? If mm. you have that information um, available before the breach happens, if you, if you do invest in some sort of, um, you know, packet capture or, um, you know, and you have these, even if you have, um, I guess, uh, work streams in place where the, the NetOps guys can easily give that uh, information to the security analysts that come in, I mean, it, it drastically reduces that um, that amount of time that you're spending. I mean, like, just, just if we just walk through an example of, of like what, what happens when there is a breach, right? So say someone in um, you know HR department gets fish right. Um, they you know uh, the hacker comes in. They're moving on the network, um, leaking sensitive information left and right, right. Um, and uh, you know, thankfully the organization they have some sort of IR retainer in place, and they can bring in the folks that you talked about, the security consultants. There's probably someone like you know Mandy and FireEye or, or Deloitte or, or what have you, right? But you know, to your point, these guys. They, you know, it's it, they they charge money. I mean, a team of four consultants probably goes for around you know um, five hundred an hour each. Five hundred times four is like two thousand an hour, right, Paul? And, mm. and these guys, they probably work more than eight hour days. Let's just say they work eight hour days. Um, that's like sixteen k per diem, right? And and this is not a trivial cost, right. right? I mean, especially if you consider that the average dwell time is it's what like i don't know 70 80 day, maybe 100 days i don't know the fact is you're spending a lot of time um uh you know bill uh, char- uh you're spending a lot of time and money on these consultants doing remediation and if you can reduce that time right. you reduce your savings tremendously you, you increase your savings tremendously so yeah. so sid help me balance um cost versus timeliness yeah. for a second, right? Because, I mean, obviously we know the cost when a breach happens, but I think most yeah. organizations are like, well, what's it going to cost me to store all this packet data yeah. and have it readily available? Where's that balance? Uh, can you yeah. talk through that a little bit? Yeah, and th- that's a very fair question. Um, you know, um, and the answer is, um, you know, it really depends on uh, the needs of your organization. What's nice about Viavi is that it, it is scalable. So um, we have different um, sizes of, of packet uh, packet capture appliances. Um, but um, you know, one thing that I think sets us apart is the fact that you know we are um, we do it fast. And we're the only um, independently validated tool um, to give you the fastest capture rates you can. And and the reason you know, the reason this I guess speaks to um, NetOps guys is pretty clear, right? I mean, that's our traditional home base. Um, they want to get as much information as possible, sure. But why is this valuable to to security analysts? Well, if you have the insights of um, of the packets, right? If you if you have what packets can tell you, then even if, um, you know, something gets past the IDS, for example, you have the ability to go back in time 
and, um, and, and find out details about what happened. And, and that's, that's very critical because if you, if you can get, um, if you can give the information to the security consultant um, about that, that particular packet capture um, file uh, during the, the time of the breach, then immediately you arm them with the information necessary to contain the scope and impact of the breach. And this sort of, you know, it, it kind of ties into what you, you were talking about before, right? Um, in the previous segment, how do you give information to the right person in a timely manner so that they can fix it? And, um, you know, the fact is, you, if you're investing this much time to, to, to uh, if you're investing this much money, rather, to hire these outside consultants to come in and do remediation, you want to give them as much information as, you know, ASAP. And with a PCAP file, they can, you can look at it and say, oh, you know, this particular set of systems is leaking way, more, way much more information than this particular set of systems. So I know as a security consultant that I'm going to tackle this one first. And what does that do? That reduces dwell time. That reduces that one six, uh, 16K per diem gets significantly you know, reduced. And um, you know, the beauty of Yavi is that we do it in a, in a couple different ways um, beyond just packet capture. But uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on that. Well, I, I think well, to balance the cost uh, mm -hmm. question, and I think you know the phrase "storage is cheap." It, it depends on perspective, right? It depends right, on how much right. you're gonna uh, you're gonna store and where you're gonna store it are the two primary factors. But what what I'm hearing is saying, right, is the value in having that packet capture, maybe paying a little more for storage than uh, you might have anticipated or, or mm -hmm. theorized from the beginning of this project, right, that you're uh, embarking on, uh, that it's very valuable. Because not only uh, is your internal security team going to benefit from it, not only are consultants who may be coming in during incident response going to benefit from it, but it also is great for just general troubleshooting as well. Like there's so many different great use cases, use cases. that yeah. reduce your cost, right? Reduce your troubleshooting time if you have that. Not to mention PCAP being a standard format, uh, mm -hmm. if you export it in that format, there is, there's dozens and dozens of tools that can import that and, and perform analysis based on the type of incident, whether that's an outage, whether that's malware that has a, a dwell time, right? Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's all going to be beneficial in the process. No, you're right. You're right. There's there's a lot of utility beyond security. I mean, um, obviously, network performance is our is our bread and butter, mm. and um, you know we we look at not just packets, right, um, but with flow too and uh, flows too, and that's I guess another uh, critical um, piece of the puzzle, right? Piece of the network puzzle that we can give to IT teams uh, to conduct their daily. Um, you know, whatever they need on a daily basis to conduct their daily business goals. But also uh, this flow information is also very helpful um, to reduce that, uh, the amount of time you're spending on remediation, especially for these outside consultants. Because, you know, like you said, Paul, finding out, um, you know, information about what that, that rogue host or device is communicating with um, now and, and what they were communicating with earlier it takes time to get that information. It takes hours. It takes days for the NetOps guys to uh, to send it over to the security consultants. And if you can type in um, a simple name, say, and and uh, find out all the devices associated with that particular user and get that information in seconds, suddenly you know. If you're spending uh, eight hours a day trying to get that information, spending 16K um, a, a day for that information to arrive, and you can literally um, empower that security consultant to just type it in and get it in a few seconds, well, that's a lot of money you're saving on a daily basis. So you know, yeah, to your we, point, um, yeah. We would do that internally as well. Uh, it it kind of reminds go. me of when I worked at the university um, mm -hmm. and I was working in the network operations group as a security person. We both had uh, similar tools and sources and were collecting packet uh, PCAPs and flow data, and we would regularly share that, right? I, they'd mm -hmm. be like, and when we had an outage, it was all hands on deck because it could be a security, yeah. could be not security. You but you yeah. know what? Both groups of people have 
knowledge that can troubleshoot whether it's a security incident or whether it's a network outage or whatever, yeah. right? We would always collaborate together. And if it was a network outage, I wouldn't be like, oh, you know, I'm security. You know, I'm out. I'm like, no, I'm going <laughs> to go through my packet captures. I'm going to try and help, you know, figure out what's wrong so we can get the right. network back up and running. Yeah. You know, at the university, there was lots of different uh, incidents. I mean, it could range from someone compromised and distributing large amounts of data, a Tor exit node I saw once. Uh, you know, rip routing protocol, someone advertised and like the whole network started routing towards, you know, once and once, you know, the, all uh -huh. the different scenarios that flow data and PCAP is crucial into troubleshooting yeah. all, all of that security or not. Yeah, no, totally. Um, you know, what's interesting to me is, is what you said about uh, this, the security teams, I guess, working so, so, you know, hand in hand with the, uh, um, the network guys at, at, uh, at the university, you know, I I don't I think that's a reflection, frankly, of of, um, of the leadership of the security teams during that time. Since uh, you know, what we hear is that sometimes that collaboration is is a, is, is a little bit tricky to manage. Yeah. You know, and yeah, and um, it, it definitely yeah. has changed. It changed yeah. several times when I worked uh, for universities over the span of uh -huh. you know seven or eight years, and, and continues to change and just be different, right? Because once yeah. you get removed out, that now you have to cross silos uh, if those silos yeah. exist, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think yeah. the other thing is is a skill set gap a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, some of us came out of the networking space, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, some of those core networking skills also are lacking in some of the younger, newer folks coming in, is because mm -hmm. we've abstracted so much, so many layers away in certain areas, right. Sid. Right. That you know, having that hardcore networking knowledge is also becoming yeah. a little harder to find. Yeah. No. Totally. Um, you know, we were at uh, SpunConf uh, last year um, in Vegas, sort of showing um, like a proof of concept of um, an application we're working on, um, I guess, delivering these network insights that we're talking about to the hands of the security analysts. And you know, a lot of the, a lot of folks there were, you know, straight out of college, right? Um, entry level analysts, not, not, not a whole lot of secure uh, network background, but um, they saw that stuff and they were like, man, this is awesome. This is because if, if this is like readily available for us, then, you know, we don't have to spend time um, again uh, trying to get this information ourselves when, you know, it, it's you, the, the network engineers maybe have other things that are that are more pressing. And, um, you know, uh, it, you know, everything that we're talking about today with these external consultants, it, it definitely does apply to the internal security analyst team as well. I mean, it's not something that um, you know, uh, I think anyone who works in security operations um, should be well versed in the network. But unfortunately, that's obviously you know to your point, Matt. It's not it's not the case right now. But um, Viavi tries to help, um, I guess, bridge that gap uh, by delivering um, the packet insights, the flow insights, um, painting a picture of the network so that um, you know security guys aren't aren't left in the dark. Yeah, and what's interesting is, you know, as let's say folks come out of school, they want to work in a SOC. If yeah. there are well-developed tools like Viave, they can be effective without having that deep knowledge, right? They may right. have taken one or two classes, you know, maybe watched yeah. some, you know, training courses on it. Um, yeah. But it's not until I truly feel you've read Richard Stevens, CCP IP Volume 1, cover to cover, <laughs> at least twice, right? Yeah. And maybe had to apply that in the real world yeah. or to some certification, right? Gotten a Cisco networking certification forces you to know uh, a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff, especially the routing protocol side, right? right. If right. you're going for an advanced pen test certification, mm -hmm. you, you, it's assuming that you know that stuff. When you're shoveling shells and doing you know things with TCP yeah. IP, it assumes that you know those those fundamentals and those are important. But my point is, that takes time. Yeah. So being able to take yeah. that person out of college, give them a tool that lets them be effective, takes pressure off of the yeah. senior security and network folks in the organization and gives that person time to learn uh, and grow, get certifications right. and training and, and, and what have in real world experience. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, we yeah. can't all sit here and go, you know, I have 20 plus years experience. Right. But it took 20 plus years for me to gain that experience. It wasn't overnight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, I, this is such an interesting conversation. You know, it reminds me kind of how, you know, even back in university, you know, some folks would, you know, skip the assembly part, right? They'd be like, oh, this is, this is trash, right? We, we, don't, we don't need to know this. It's so low level. 
Um, and, um, and then they start, you know, uh, I guess delving really deep into, you know, all these different types of algorithms and, you know, merge sort or whatever, right. I don't know. Um, Java, Python, get really familiar, but then when they're debugging, um, and inevitably there's some sort of, you know, set, and, you know, they have to be able to, to know a little, at least a little bit about the nitty gritty. Yep. And um, I think that's a, it's a similar, uh, in the similar sort of vein, um, you know, if you're a security analyst, security consultant, and um, you're, you're doing your best to do instant response um, without having the knowledge, um, you know, about, uh, um, you know, all these things, uh, you know, TCP IP, OSI layer, you know, uh, you don't have to get super deep, but you should have a basic understanding. Yeah. And I think Viavi helps bridge that gap. Matt, sorry, did you have other comments or questions? No, I, I think he's right, right? I mean, anything that you can do to bridge the gap, give the give that visibility in a way that people can use it and leverage it mm-hmm. is important, I think, for the skill sets as they're coming in. But to your point, right, by also having that data, I'm, I'm going to make incident response faster. I'm also probably going to mm-hmm. hopefully shrink my dwell time of how long uh, mm-hmm. these attackers are on the network. I mean, there's a lot of downstream benefits. I think, you know, to me, it's all about balancing that cost structure yeah. right now. Cause I think a lot of people are thinking like, okay, how much do I have to spend to give me that benefit? Mm-hmm. But mm. there's a delicate balance there. And if we can yeah. figure that out, yeah. then I think organizations are in a better position. Yeah, no, you're right. And, you know, I think it's, it's also just important just to keep in mind, you know, uh, breaches are going to happen. I mean, it's not, you know, it's it's a pretty trite saying, but uh, it's not a matter of if, right? It's a matter of when. Um, and to the extent that you you have these um, these tools in place before, not not even tools, um, just a way to give information to the right people. Um, if you have this, if you have work streams in place beforehand to do this, um, then you will immediately see that return on investment because the you know, remediation costs a lot. And when you get breached, um, having that PCAP file, having the flow data readily available um, can significantly reduce that, especially if these, you know, really expensive consultants come in and, and try to... Now, um, now Sid, you know, when, when those consultants come so, in, um, mm-hmm. and, and just in general, in your yeah. experience working with customers, like how far back are people storing uh, that data. And I'm sure that varies per yeah. industry and there's compliance regulations that play into that as well. But like yeah. how much of a system of record are they, are they keeping? And it depends on their bandwidth, how many hosts too, or there's a lot of variables, yeah. but yeah. So, you know, I, I can't say specifics, but, um, what I can say is, uh, you know, uh, before having, uh, an appliance that can store up to one petabyte, you know, for example, of, mm-hmm. of, of, uh, of data that um, lets you go that far back in time and do this extended you know, storage capabilities. Um, without having that, um, you miss a lot. Um, and, and, and um, you know, what, what, we're, what we're hearing and what we're seeing is, is um, it's not just the fact that you store the information um, quickly or the fact that you you have all this extended storage it's the fact that you show the in, it's easily accessible the information that you store is easily accessible um, you know we all like to talk about a single pane of glass um, but you know the fact is if you have a higher level dashboard which you know the observer platform does have um, it's that allows you to delve into the packets flow that you have collected, um, one that's accessible to not just the network teams, but the security right. teams too. Um, that's where you know the value sort of shines because if you're collecting, 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 you can have the biggest, baddest box around, um, and it won't give you the um, you know the uh, the advantages that that we're talking about if they're not easily accessible. Right, so did, did you know, an, an, an entry level person, yep. right, can be working in Viave, start to car- carve out data, maybe give people what they need. Without that, mm-hmm. if I look at another example, uh, if I look, Bro, which is now Zeek, right, creates PCAP files, right? If you wanted to go back into terabytes, let alone a petabyte, and, and carve out specific dates and times and stuff like that, like that's, 
Now you're talking about you're writing scripts, you're combining yeah. PCAPs back together, maybe you're exactly. filtering and, and all that stuff. So that gets and, and who's going to do that, right? Paul, who's going to do that? Is it going to be the network guy or is it going to be security guy? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be your way, senior be... In, in either in either case, right? Yeah, and then yeah. they're going to have to stop what they're doing to go right. do that. Whereas you could have, that. so it's not just the storage, it's the accessibility right. Um, to yeah, kind of spread and, and that, that kind of out. even speaks a little bit to the collaboration sort of, you know, NetOps mm. and SecOps working together. I mean, there's going to be more friction if you ask a senior network engineer yep. to go back and, and do this in the middle of their day when there's, you know, especially right now. I mean, everyone's yep. VP, everyone's having VPN issues, performance issues. It's, you know, it's not going to help any of that. So um, it's not just the monetary benefit. There's also just... Um, I guess, for lack of a better word, organizational benefits and synergies that, you know, that are at play here. Matt, more questions for Sid? No, I'm good. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's a win when you can have uh, different groups outside of security all mm -hmm. using the same tools, right? That's yep. that's a huge yep. benefit. We talk about the, the skills gap in security. That's one way, and the way I like the best to start bridging that gap uh, is start engaging other groups within the organization on tools that they can understand and platforms that they can be engaged in, uh, and we're all working mm -hmm. literally off the same page, uh, which is nice. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Uh, for the folks that want to learn more, you can go to securityweekly.com forward slash Viavi. Sid, thank you very much for appearing on the show today. Thanks for having me. And with that, we will conclude the show. Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. See you next time on Enterprise Security Weekly.